Yo, what's happening folks and welcome back to the HitLab Academy for YouTube with myself, Howie. And apologies for not posting a video the last two weeks. I've been on the road with my band Watershed. We've been touring, we released a new album. So go check that out. The band's called Watershed and the album's called Elephant in the Room. But in today's tutorial, we are gonna be checking out the drum machine designer and step sequencer in Logic Pro 10.5 and up. So stick around, let's get into it. So today we are looking at the drum machine designer and the step sequencer inside Logic Pro. And I personally think it is the best way to program drums. I have removed all my other ways of programming drums since I've discovered the step sequencer and started using it and getting used to the workflow. So let's get into this project and check it out. Okay, so I've got a bunch of pre-selected sample sounds on the right over here. They are external sounds that I've collected over the years. I've got a whole bunch of my own samples that I really dig. And the way you access this drum machine designer is by simply dragging all these samples right over there and then selecting drum machine designer. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna place all those samples within the machine designer right over there. And if you wanna audition these sounds that you've just loaded into the sampler, you can just hit that little speaker button over there on either of the channels that you would like to audition. So these are all the sounds that I really like to use. So there's many ways that you can use this sampler, but the way we're gonna use it today is fairly simple. Um, but you can basically, if you select your snare, you can drag this little thing here and you can shorten the length of the snare. You can add a fade to it if you want, a nice exit of that sound. It's really easy and really user friendly, but for the sake of today, I'm just gonna keep everything as is. Right, the next step you wanna do to access the step designer is you wanna close that and right click on your timeline and create pattern region. And what that does is that basically opens up your step sequencer over there with all your samples and everything above and below one another. But the cool thing about this um, drum machine designer is that you don't have to go and root the channels yourself. You have it all pre-rooted by Logic for you. So if I open this drum machine designer folder right over there, you can see there is a MIDI channel for each of the sounds that I've loaded into the sampler, which makes things really awesome when rendering out your MIDI files to audio files at a later stage. We'll get into that. But for the sake of how the machine designer works, you wanna double click on that over there and you're gonna get your step sequencer. Now inside the step sequencer, you can do many things. The first of which is very important to know is that that over there is your preview button. That allows you to actually hear the pattern you're creating by pressing that audition button. And as you can see, it runs independently from your timeline. Your timeline and click track isn't actually running at this moment. It's just the step sequences so that you can build your beat based on the tempo that you have set. And we've got this tempo set to 82 beats per minute. Right, and then the next thing you do, like any step sequencer works, is you basically just click in the sounds you want and where you want them to build your groove. So what I've done is I've selected 16 steps, which has given me 16 instances, shall we say, but it's actually made up of 16 instances around one bar. So this whole step sequencer here is one bar length of drum beat which you can then duplicate and extend and do what you need to do with it to add fills or whatever whatever you want to do to your drum groove so how it works is you simply just click on the nodes that you want and you can add that sound and apply and just click on the node if you want to remove that particular sound on that node so what I've got it set to I've got my grid set to 16th notes so I'm going to go ahead press my preview button and I'm going to build a beat for you All right, so what you can do is you can listen to that beat on your timeline as well. And all you need to do over there is basically select your timeline, select where you wanna listen from and press play.
And if you have a look over here, if I close that, you'll have you'll see that those various sounds, your kick, your hats, your snare, have been rooted to their various channels over here within that drum machine designer folder. So have a look at that. So that allows you to then control your panning, your volumes, and, and add extra effects you would like to add in your audio effects area over there on the left. But for the sake of the tutorial, we're just having a look at the step sequencer itself. So what's awesome about the step sequencer is you can add more notes to the groove you've made by simply click clicking this little button over here. You get the option of velocity, which is your velocity, the volume of that specific hit. And then you've got note repeat, which is super exciting. So let's start with velocity. What I like to do off the bat is just reduce the, vo the velocity of the 16th notes in between my eights in order to make it feel like it is just grooving a little bit. So now if I play this back, you'll have a listen. It's got a little bit more feel to it, for a lack of better words. So the next thing, note repeat. This is really, really awesome. So if you want to add some of those trap hats and those really fast hats without creating more nodes and complicating the step sequence. So all you do is select note repeat and choose the note you would like to add more notes to. So for instance, I would like to add more notes to these last two sixteenths at the end over here. So I'm simply just going to add double the amount of notes there. So it's going to convert that sixteenth to two 30 second notes and I'm going to do the same over there but I'm going to make it a triplet. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So as you can hear, it's doing some cool things on the hats. And there are various different options. You can just click that little plus button over there and that will give you different options. But one of the more specific options I really love is the start offset. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to, to delay where the note is actually sitting on your grid. So with Hyatt in a beat like this, scenario, I would like to put my heights a little bit behind the rest of the groove. So how I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to drag each one of them independently like that out and I'm going to go ahead and put them simply just a little bit behind the beat and that's going to make it feel like it is slightly backbeat. I, I might be doing this a bit too much right now but for the sake of the tutorial I'm just going to show you. I'm going to make these last four really heavy so that you can actually see how backbeat you can make your hi-hat pattern. So let's have a listen to that. So that's really awesome. It basically allows you to really get an awesome and comfortable pocket style feel with the step sequencer. Then once you've created your beat, so that beat, it, that whole step sequenced beat that we've just made here consists of one bar. So what I like to do is if I want to do edits, I'll just make that one bar's length and then duplicate the sequence pattern. And then I can basically change each one the way I would like to change it. Um, if I want to put a little fill in on the fourth bar, I can do that and it'll work. So let me put a fill in here on the snare. Let me take those hats away and we'll leave that kick and we'll make that little fill at the end repeat with a triplet. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like if we listen to this as a four bar cycle. Which is really cool. Now, the awesome thing and the most practical thing that I love about the way they've designed this drum machine designer and step sequencer is because of the following. So how this works next is you select all the sequences you've created, you right click and say convert to MIDI region. Now that's made MIDI regions and then if you select the whole thing again, right click and say separate by note pitch. What it does is it spits out the individual MIDI files for each sample. So you've got your individual hi-hat MIDI sound right over there. You've got your individual kick over there and you've got your snare over there, which you can then go in and you can tweak and affect as you want going through the song. Right, folks, well, that's it for this week. That's the Logic Pro 10.5 updates, step sequencer and drum machine designer. It is really awesome and my preferred way for drum programming, at least now until something better comes along. 
I love it and I think you guys will too. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know if this tutorial helped you at all or if you do use the step sequencer yourself. Tell me how you feel about it. I think it is really great. If you haven't yet, folks, please head on over to our channel, ring the little bell button for instant notifications and subscribe to the channel. I recently noticed that at least 85% of the viewers watching this channel aren't subscribed. So please subscribe. It is really awesome. And leave a comment down below for the algorithm and give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how you felt it went. Well folks, that's it for this week. I've had a great time. I'm gonna go program some beats right now. I hope you guys are gonna do the same and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have yourselves a fantastic week. Peace.